What is going on with used car prices? Why are cars so expensive? Well, my name is Craig from Flying Wheels. I own a car dealership, and I'm going to tell you why cars are so expensive in trade in value, wholesale, and retail. I'm not just going to tell you why everything's so expensive, I'm going to show you why. Come along with me to the auction today. I've been going for three weeks straight videoing car prices, and I'm going to show you what's happening at the auction and why it reflects you as car dealers and you as consumers. So first of all, I'm gonna start off by saying if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe if you love anything auto-related or wanna get updates on what's going on in the used car market as a dealer, as a consumer, and so on. Now, COVID-19 quarantine has thrown a mix for everything. Everything is off right now. Businesses and car dealerships were shut down all over the country. Well, what does that mean? People couldn't buy cars, people couldn't sell cars. So it affects everyone. The used car market affects everyone in general. When you're buying new cars, you trade in your car. So when you trade in your car, we as used car dealers, independent dealers, buy your trade in and then we sell it to the consumer that wants to purchase something that's not new. So they want a pre-owned vehicle. So we buy them at auction or we buy them from the dealers as trade-ins. We go through them, we inspect them, we detail them, we recon them, and then we resell them, all of which helps boost the economy. Now the economy has been overinflated for a long time. Used car prices have been overinflated for a long time and we needed a correction. Well, COVID-19 was that correction. So for months, dealerships were out of business, closed. A lot of dealerships closed permanently and are not coming back. If you drive down the main streets that have all the car dealerships right now, they're no longer open. So what was going on, the dealers were closed, so no one was buying, so the dealers weren't buying and the consumers weren't buying. Well, now that everything's opened again, people are buying like crazy. My car dealership is almost empty. My inventory is almost gone. Well, all the big dealers, the Carvanas, the CarMaxes, Drive Time, places like that, that really inflate the economy, that, that really inflate the market, they overpay for vehicles, were not in business, they were closed. Us as dealers, what we would normally pay, we could purchase for $1,500 less on almost every vehicle. So there's a great margin. So for a while, we actually thought we were gonna do really, really well. Well, what happened was Drive Time, CarMax, Carvana, and all the bigger dealerships opened back up, started overpaying for cars to refill that inventory because now the market's flooded with buyers and we can't replenish that inventory. So now everybody's fighting to fill up their lots. Everybody's overpaying to compete for cars. So it's easy to say, oh, you car dealers are charging too much money. You car dealers are making too much money. That's not the case. What's happened is a lot of subprime buying. So there's a lot of low credit buyers buying cars right now. They got their stimulus checks and it's like a tax season 2.0, like I said before. So people are buying, but they have low credit or they're not paying their bills right now. So now they're getting low credit. Well, what happens when we go to our subprime banks, subprime is low credit, mid to low credit, not prime credit. When we go to our subprime banks, they have a discount. They call it a discount because they can't call it a fee. So a discount is a fee imposed on the dealer that the dealer gets charged by the subprime bank. So it can be upwards of fifteen dollars to $2,000. So if I'm selling a car for $10,000 and the discount's $1,200, I'm really only selling that car for $8,800. So how much profit do I actually have in the, on a $10,000 car? I might mark up a car $1,800 and then when it's a $1,200 discount, they give me a price I have to sell sell it at, I'm only making $800 on a car. That's a lot of work. I spend a lot of time shopping for cars, reconning cars, fixing, repairing, detailing, and then the cost of doing business to make $800 on a car. So we can't really discount the price of our vehicles on subprime loans because the discount has gone higher. The discount, meaning the fee that the subprime bank has charged us, has gone up because of higher risk right now. So because we're paying more, you're paying more. Let me show you what I mean. Now the auctions are actually still closed. A lot, a lot of auctions are closed 100%, meaning we can't even get in to look at the cars. So a lot of dealers are buying simulcast, which means buying online blindly. They're going off condition reports, which is somebody else's condition reports that they go through a car and they base a condition and they take photos and you have to hope the car is what they say it is. Fortunately, this auction I go to, they allow us in to inspect the vehicles and then I make a list of everything I'm buying and then I have to go home and then bid on them online. So even still, I miss out on a lot of cars that I would normally buy in lanes. So I might see a car up in the lane, inspect it within a 30 seconds to 60 seconds and then go bid on it. So those cars are too high of a risk to actually be looking at something like this. So I have to physically go in every single car, see, touch, smell, feel 
so I know what I'm buying. Then I have to make a list and write down what I want. Now, when I see something going through that I think is a great price, I can't actually bid on it if I hadn't looked at it yet because it's just too much risk. If I haven't seen it, I don't know what it is that I'm buying. And in most cases, when I come to the auction early, when we're allowed to go in lanes and bid in lane, I might, I might look at 50 cars and only buy one of those cars that I looked at, but I might buy five cars that I hadn't looked at until I saw them in the lane. And when I can't buy those five cars, it means my inventory is much lower but my cost of doing business is the same. So I'm either paying more for the cars that I want or I don't have enough inventory to pay for the cost of doing business. I'm gonna give you an example of what I'm talking about. So we're looking at this Jeep Patriot right now. This isn't something that I would normally pick out in the lane, walk through, go and inspect. However, if it was running through the auction and I was up there, it might be something that I would actually bid on if the price was right. So I might see it in the lane, hear the number, know that that's a great price and go bid on it right away. But if I don't know this car and I can't look at it in lane, I'm not gonna bid on it. So now that's not a piece of my inventory. Now the auctions have a little bit of everything. You can see there's a boat right here. There's a brand new, well, a 2019 Ford F-150 Platinum. There's some used cars, there's new car, newer cars. There's a little bit of everything at the auction, so I can get my hands on just about anything here. Now there's this thing called a Mannheim Market Report. Mannheim is one of the largest auction houses of the entire country. They're all over the country, and they house some of the most inventory to wholesale out to dealers. Now a Mannheim Market Report tells us what dealers have paid for specific vehicles, similar vehicles with the same mileage in the past 30 days. So I can take my app and I can scan this barcode right here, and it comes up with the history. So I know this is a Lariat 5.4, and I know that it has 142,000 miles. So this says I should pay around $8,450, four owners, no accidents, and the odometer has a problem. So I should be paying around $8,500 plus auction fees, plus transportation, plus the cost of repair. So we're gonna see this car run through the auction, see what it goes for. So I'm actually here shopping for a Chevy Avalanche and you can see I found a Chevy Avalanche right here. I have a buyer for one, but there's limited inventory for Avalanches I've been looking for weeks. So what does that mean? Well, I'm gonna pay more when I find the Avalanche that I want because there's not a lot of Chevy Avalanches out there. So again, if I have to pay more, so does the consumer. And look at, this is the only one here. So I'm either desperate buying one with the clear coat faded, the mirror broken, rust all up and down, or I hold off for the one that I want and then I pay way too much for it. Obviously, I'm not gonna buy this one, it's a little too rough. Not a little, it is too rough. Look at this 99 Cobra, 88,000 miles, but that's no stock Cobra, this car is nasty. Now in either 03 or 04, these came supercharged, which was even cooler and they really hold their value. Oh, that's a stiff clutch. As a short throw shifter. I like that Cobra shifter too. Low miles for what it is. Oh my goodness, that clutch is so tight. Oof. This thing would not be an everyday car. It's pretty neat. 79 Beetle, 13,000 13, miles. Must be 113,000 miles. Convertible too. Oh my goodness, this would be so fun. This would be such a fun car to drive around. <laughs> I think my mother had one of these in high school. We got an Audi TT and then a Mustang GT 05 133K. I love that roll bar. Audi TT 103,000 miles, six speed, quattro, which means it's a 225 horse quattro, four cylinder high output turbo. It starts. So I scan the VIN, it shows me two owners, no accidents. Looks like I should be around $2,500 for it. Let's go to the Mustang. We have oxidation on the wheels. How's the leather? Leather's worn, but not ripped. Will it start? Will it start? Dead battery, I think. All right, so turn the key, push the clutch in, and you'll see right here, start engine. Huh, fires up. Now that's pretty hacky. Did somebody, but it was done like clean. It looks kind of neat. Was it done? out of necessity because it wasn't starting and somebody didn't want to diagnose the real problem so they bypassed it or did they do it for cosmetics for aesthetics because they thought it looked cool and was more oh modern. hell yeah o2 lightning 118,000 miles oh nice 
Got a little rip right here in the suede. Oh my goodness, these trucks are so awesome. Is this supercharged? I feel like this is supercharged. 5.4 supercharger. Wow, cool truck. And there it is, Ford Special Vehicle Team supercharger on it. So when I scan it, there are too few of these, obviously, that ran through auction, so I can't figure out what it's worth. But it has five owners, one accident, and something wrong with the odometer or the title. So I'm heading back to my office now to go bid on cars. And what happens is now I have to go bid on cars. There are seven lanes in the auction, which means I have to open seven different tabs on my screen and follow all seven different tabs just to find the cars that I wrote on my list. Now there's more to it than just auction prices. Repossessions were at a, a complete halt for a long time. So we buy bank repos. So we buy bank repos and then we sell bank repos for the consumer to purchase. When there's less repossessions, there's less for us to purchase, there's less for us to sell, which means there's less for you to buy. Again, low supply, high demand, higher prices. Now in the next few months, we're going to see a significantly higher repossession rate because when the banks weren't allowed to repossess, all they did was forbear loans they put the loan payment on hold, but that loan payment is still going to be due. So everyone keeps thinking, hey, I don't have to pay my loans right now. I don't have to pay my loans right now. You are going to have to pay your loans in bulk. You're gonna to have to pay it in a lump sum when this is over. So when people don't realize that they have three months worth of payments that they haven't made because they couldn't afford it then, if they couldn't afford it then, why can they afford three payments or four payments later in the future altogether? When they can't afford those payments, guess what's gonna happen? Their cars are gonna get repossessed. And then the market is gonna flood with repossessions. Okay, let's talk about all the rental companies going into bankruptcy. Going into bankruptcy does not mean they're closing. They're not going out of business. They're still in business. They're liquidating some of their assets and moving around some of their debt. So yes, Hertz going up for bankruptcy. They are going to sell some of their inventory, but they're already an independent dealer as well. They sell their inventory retail, just like a lot of other rental car companies. Enterprise has their own retail locations as well. Okay, let's head back to the office and go bid on some cars. Here's the Cobra. And a nice one, 80, 80, 80, 65, six, seven. Oh, that is so much money. So 8,900 plus auction fees. So you're gonna be into that car for well over nine grand plus any repairs that it needs to make sure it's inspectable. Tires, brakes, fuel lines. You don't know what that car needs and it's at auction. So there's really no history. Plus it has seven owners in one accident. How much can I actually resell a 99 Cobra for? That's not a desirable car. People don't go online and type in 1999 Cobra. They want the 03, 04 supercharged Cobra. So that's not that much of a collector's item. Plus it's not original. Now you see nine grand for a car that I can't really sell for much more than eight. I would have probably listed it for 8,500. So I'm gonna use this one as an example. Here's a 2012 Jeep Patriot Latitude. Now I did not look at this car, but it's something I might buy. 110,000 miles. So we're gonna to go to right here. This right here is a credit re uh, condition report. The condition report tells me nothing. So the only thing I have to go by if I didn't look at this car is nine photos. So here's a good example. This 14 Dodge Ram Tradesman with 116,000 miles is worth $11,750 and it's 12.3 right now with auction fees. So it's gonna be 12 or 12, 4. So that truck sold for $13,400 plus auction fees are going to be another $400. So, so $13,800 plus any cost of repair plus transport. So they're going to be into it for almost $14,500 maybe, $15,000 possibly. And this shows after scanning it and typing in the mileage that it should have been $11,750. So they paid way over what they should have been spending. Now this is what I'm here for. I want this Porsche Carrera 2 convertible. This is a Carrera S. He's a car than that boy. It's up to $35,000. $38,800 dollars plus auction fees, plus transport, plus that Porsche needed brakes. So somebody's gonna be into that thing for almost 40 grand before they can sell it. 
I was supposed to be at 35 grand. That's market value. That's what they're going for. That's what they should be going for is 35 grand. Somebody just paid 38.8 for it. So here's the beetle. I would spend, I don't know, that was pretty clean. For a convertible beetle, I would go up to three grand on that car, and I bet it's going to go for way more than that. Ah. Come on, how can they do that to us? <clears throat> okay, here's the Mustang. I would go up to five grand on this Mustang. So here's something great. I am done with my day. I don't want to bid anymore. So I can actually enter a bid. Now, let's say I want to go up to 6,500 on this truck. I'm going to set a proxy bid on this truck that allows me that allows the auction to bid for me up to $6,500 and I can just walk away. So I set it and forget it. No, I'm leaving. I'm done for the day. So here's the beetle. I would spend, I don't know, that was pretty clean. For a convertible beetle, I would go up to three grand on that car and I bet it's going to go for way more than that. Come on, how can they do that to us? All right, that Mustang's up. This Mustang, I would go up to five grand on. <clears throat> okay, here's the Mustang. I would go up to five grand on this Mustang. Oh, it's climbing fast. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, man. Six grand, sixty one. Oh man, is it worth that? What is that car going to sell for? Seventy two hundred plus auction fees, that is absolutely insane. Day two, auction day. We missed picking up the car last night because I made a lot of mistakes and did a lot of running around. German's picking up a truck that I bought sight unseen, a 2014 Chevy Silverado Crew Cab LTZ with a plow. Didn't look at it at the auction, didn't see it. I just know that I think I bought it right, but I don't even know how rusty this thing is. I don't know the cab corners, the rocker panels, or even if there's an engine noise or the transmission slips. That's the problem with buying simulcast. I didn't look at this car. Good luck. Thanks. You have to bring it home. <laughs> and call, will you call me when you get in and let me know yes, how it is, good or bad? All right, thanks. So because of coronavirus, COVID-19 quarantine, we can't even go inside. So ring the doorbell, someone will come out, you give them the check, they'll give you the title, the gate pass, and then I think they'll even grab your truck for you. Go up there when you're finished. I bought another truck, sight unseen, and that's what's so difficult. Everything I looked at yesterday, I didn't buy a single one of those because they were all overpriced. I want cars and I can't fill my lot because everything is so expensive, so I ended up buying something that I haven't even looked at. Say hi. So just to put it in perspective, so you know I'm not alone in this, this dealer I'm driving by right now is a peer of mine. He's a friend of mine that owns a dealership, and he has usually 
35 plus cars. Let's see, he has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cars for sale. He has eight cars for sale on, on his average is 20 to 30. So obviously he's done well selling a lot of cars, but having trouble restocking inventory just like I am. Next morning, truck is here. I was so excited to see this thing because I don't know anything about it. Literally, I didn't even see it at the auction. I didn't look at it. I didn't hear it run. I know nothing about it. I just know that it's a 14 Silverado LTZ with a plow, which in New England makes it extremely valuable. Clean leather, heated leather, nav, no sunroof. Oh, DVD, and it's a 6.2. The 6.2, 405 horse over the 5.3 is, is a huge upgrade. We have here a Boss plow for it. Hope it came with the controls. Tonneau cover, a little bit of a dent right here that I have to take care of. Cab corners and rocker panels are solid though. This was a lucky score. German drove it home last night, said it ran great. It was smooth, shifted smoothly, engine purred. <sighs> that was a lucky one. Next morning, truck is here. I was so excited to see this thing because I don't know anything about it. Literally, I didn't even see it at the auction. I didn't look at it. I didn't hear it run. I know nothing about it. I just know that it's a 14 Silverado LTZ with a plow, which in New England makes it extremely valuable clean leather heated leather nav no sunroof oh dvd and it's a 6.2 the 6.2 405 horse over the 5.3 is in is a huge upgrade we have here a boss plow for it hope it came with the controls tonneau cover a little bit of a dent right here that i have to take care of cab corners and rocker panels are solid though this was a lucky score. German drove it home last night, said it ran great. It was smooth, shifted smoothly, engine purred. <sighs> that was a lucky one. So there you have it. I've bought some pretty cool cars recently. You can see that, that, the Jeep, the CTSV. I've bought some pretty cool cars lately, but I'm way overpaying for everything just so I could fill my inventory. About two weeks ago, this parking lot was empty. And if I have open spots, that's open real estate, not making any money. So I'd rather make 500 or 800 or a thousand than a big goose egg right so guys that was my video for this week i hope it was entertaining i hope it was informative if it was do me a favor give me a thumbs up because then youtube recommends it to other people and if you haven't subscribed yet what are you waiting for make sure to subscribe otherwise i'll see you all in the next video thanks for watching adios